How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be going over how to debug WordPress PHP. These are some techniques that I use when I'm working on projects and they come in quite handy. So I figured I'd make a video to help you guys out. We're going to be going over how to turn on error logging. First of all, we're also going to be going over WP debug display and WP debug log, which are WordPress specific constants. And then lastly, we're going to be going over how to debug PHP when you're making an Ajax request. So all those together, you'll have a pretty nice set of tools for your next project or a project you're currently working on. And remember, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to make sure that you get notified of my weekly WordPress development tutorials. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so I have WordPress installed here with the foundation press theme activated. And so right now we can refresh the page and we don't get any errors or anything like that. Everything's looking good. But let's head over to our wp-config.php in our code. And we're gonna be looking for this line right here, WP debug. By default, WordPress sets its debug mode to false. And we're going to set that to true. And go back and refresh. Now all of a sudden WordPress is in debug mode and we're going to start to see notices and warnings up here at the top. So that's step number one. The other thing that we can start doing as well is we can start logging these errors as well into a log file. To do that, all we have to do is define WP debug log and set that to true. What this is going to do is that in addition to displaying our errors and warnings and notices, it's also going to keep a record of it in this path right here, WP content debug.log. So let's see what that does. Let's hit save. We'll go back over to our site, hit refresh, and then we should see a debug log over here, which we do. And that's going to be in your WP content folder. We can click into it and we can see the same notice and warning that we saw on the home page. This is really helpful when you're working in test environments or anything like that. So you may not have encounter the error directly yourself, but you can see if people who are testing the site or even users for that matter are running into these errors. That way you can tackle them behind the scenes. And if that's the case, we're going to want to turn off the errors from displaying to the screen. So let's go back to WP config and let's paste in this. We want to type in WP debug display and set that to false. So if we go back to our home page, we can refresh and that's no longer showing. But if we go into our debug log, we now have a second set of notices and warnings showing us the same thing that we saw earlier, just with a slightly different timestamp. So this is all fine and dandy when you're debugging PHP, like you know, there's errors going on and all that kind of stuff. But what about like when you're coding something yourself and you just need to kind of check to see how things are going or, you know, you need to dig a little bit deeper into how things are functioning. So typically what you can do is let's go to functions.php here real quick. And let's just, for example, you know, you have some posts and you want to get the posts and you want to see what this posts variable looks like. Well, you can typically do something like this and dump out the posts. You echo out um, a print or a var dump for that matter, and then you die. So when you go back to your home page, you can hit refresh and you get this. So that way you can start debugging variables as they get to you. Well, with Ajax, it becomes a little bit different. So let me show you what that looks like. So let's delete this and then let's go open our homepage. And in the foundation press theme, it's under page templates front.php right here. So we're gonna click on that and scroll down to the bottom. And down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a simple Ajax function. So we're just going to have it. So every time that the download button is clicked, it's going to send us some data. So we're going to then console log the response from the server. So let's go over to our func go back over to our functions.php and set up that Ajax call or the server side of that, I should say. So we've got wp ajax no priv my function, and then it's going to send back to JavaScript 
the post request. So what we should get is something like this. When we refresh this page and open up our console, every time we click this download button, we get a response back from PHP and it has data, my function, and whatever, one, two, three, four. So that's all fine and dandy when we're in complete control of the situation. However, when you start to start working with third-party plugins and JavaScript and all that kind of stuff, things get a little bit hairier. So let's take this one step further. So let's pretend that there is some third-party JavaScript that is sending an Ajax request to our server. So that third-party JavaScript is not console logging every time that it sends and receives data. So let's take that out of there and let's go to our functions.php. And in this example, we need to send back to that JavaScript the post request that it gave us plus a list of posts. So let's do that. We're gonna get some posts and we need to make sure, you know, and for some reason that those posts aren't coming back, things aren't looking the way that we thought they were, we need to debug what we're getting back inside of these posts. So let's do what we did earlier, dump and die these posts. Let's hit save and go back to our page. We're not getting anything. Let's hit download. I'm clicking download and I'm not getting anything. So we're kind of in a sticky situation here. The third party JavaScript is not as helpful as we want it to be, but I really need to know what these posts are because it's not working for me. So what do we do in this situation? So luckily there's a couple different methods here. And the first method that I want to show you is actually something you all should have is Chrome. And inside of Chrome, we have this network tab. Now this network tab is very helpful because right here we have this bar that tells us all the different requests that are being made on a page load. Well, particularly XHR is going to be helpful for us. So if we hit refresh, we're on X, X, XHR and we hit download, we get a new item inside of our list down here, admin-ajax.php. We can click that and if we hit the preview tab, we get that um, var dump of everything that was in our post. So we can start to debug it this way. However, there is another situation and if you've watched my advanced tutorial about how to scrape an API, we got to a point where we were running like hundreds of these at a time and it got really crazy. So the other method that you could do is actually logging as you make the requests. So let's delete that right here. And let me show you how that's done. Let's paste this in. And what we're doing is we're getting all the posts. We're declaring a file on our child theme called customlog.txt. And then what we're doing is we're using a PHP function called file put contents. And then we are print ring the posts into that file, at to the end of that file to be specific. And I want to make a note that print r takes two arguments. The second argument needs to be true and that will return the results rather than echo them out, which is very important when, when writing to a file. And then we're going to send it back. So let's take a look at this. So if we go back to our homepage, hit uh, refresh, hit download a few times, and then we can go back to our files and look for custom log.txt, which is right here. We also get the posts array. So I hope you can start to see that there's a lot of different ways that you can debug PHP and WordPress. And hopefully you found a new method or two that you can add to your tool belt on your next project. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Let me know if you've got another method of doing PHP debugging. I'm always looking for new ways to do it. And remember that if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel for the weekly WordPress tutorials. And again, thanks guys for watching. I appreciate the support and I will see you in the next one.